So these problems are going to go as follows. Whenever it's a collecting gas over a liquid, and you'll do something like this when you do your very last lap. The math will be the same, but it'll be a different setup. Uh, you have usually like this container, say a test tube, and you have material in here, some usually a solid, it doesn't have to be. And then it has this tube. This is a common like 2A reaction of what you're going to do a similar one later. Uh, and then this tube goes into a beaker. And you have this upside down graduated cylinder here. And the tube goes like this. So what happens is this here, this reactant, I'll just call it R, goes to, let's say, product 1 plus product 2. And one of these products is a gas. And so this here, is, this speaker has liquid, and this is filled with liquid to start off with. Okay, so you have liquid and you kind of invert it and stick it in there. What happens when the gas starts to come off, it bubbles, and those bubbles come up to the top here. And at the end, you'll have a certain amount of gas at the top, which you can measure with your graduated. It has graduation marks here, so you can measure the volume of gas. Okay? Uh, and then what you need to do, you'll have to do some little calculation to figure out. You'll want to know uh, the pressure of this gas. So, what you do is you say, okay, the total pressure, and this is always the same setup, so that's why we're doing it like this. Always the same, it doesn't matter what it is. Total pressure is going to be the pressure of the gas. It's going to be some partial pressure of gas. There will also be another gas in there, though. Always will have water, because it's bubbling through the water, so there'll be some vapor pressure of water. So what you do when you do these kinds of problems, this total pressure right here, this is from a barometer, aka this is atmospheric pressure. So if you're in lab, you look at this thing right here, <laughs> you read the number off of it, otherwise if they tell you to just make an assumption, you'll say it's one atmosphere. Okay? This number here, you look up in the table, which we'll give you on the exam. So, what it'll have is there'll be a temperature column and a pressure column for water. It'll be specifically for water. And I'll list a bunch of temperatures here and a bunch of pressures. And you find your temperature, whatever the pressure is on that table, you put that in there. So that's your partial pressure of water. The table will be listed as like a vapor pressure or something like that, maybe partial pressures, but is this table, we'll talk about it more in class. You just read it off, boom, stick that in there, so da -da -da, there's your only unknown, and that's your use of Dalton's Law <laughs> in this question. Then the next part is uh, setting up a little equation depending on what you want to solve for. But say a common thing to solve for is the moles of the gas for example. So you just say moles of your gas equals PV over RT. So P, pressure, this is the pressure of the gas. That's from here. That's from Dalton's Law. Your volume is whatever's measured. If you're doing it in a problem, they have to give you this volume. And your temperature if you're in lab, it's whatever your thermometer says. But if you're doing a problem, they have to tell you that. And then R is a constant. So you got everything. You can find the moles of your gas. And if they want to, you could do a stoichiometric calculation or whatever. Is that okay? So it's really this. This is the key part. Total pressure, atmospheric pressure from your barometer. The gas, that's what you're solving for. And the water is from the table. Okay?